Well, good morning. Welcome back to the mission for big day three. I just woke up not too long ago. And as you can tell, my throat is sore. I was a little bit sick before, so I'm sure that has a lot to do with it. But I also noticed both of my carbon monoxide detectors were at 35 and 37. We've got the door open right now, just to get a bunch of air in here. As you can see, my vents are open, but there's no breeze last night at all. So there's like no tra no fresh air coming. The, the, this, the sore throat right now isn't completely from the propane. I know that for sure because I was just, I've been sick before I started this trip and I'm sure that's just kind of the, the side effects or the after effects from it, but you have to be careful. Like if you got no breeze and stuff like that too, there's another added thing that could happen, right? Like you got no, no airflow going. I've talked about this many times in some videos and I'm just obviously trying to spread awareness because it's only a matter of time before somebody uh, puts himself in severe danger again without knowing it. There's nothing wrong with like, as long as you know, you can like avoid it, right? So yeah, with that window, with that door being open, look at, they're both at zero already. I'll put a picture up here of what they, what they were at. I took a picture of them right away. So, and I noticed I have my buddy heater on high like most of the night. And I noticed it kind of flickering when I woke up. So that's probably, it was at his brink of almost shutting off type of thing too. So anyways, let's, uh, Let's start fishing, even though we're probably a little bit early yet. It's uh, still about an hour and a half before sunrise. I haven't seen any fish really move on the graph yet. But we'll start fishing. Perch, walleye, pike is the goal today. Pike will be probably the main focus because at about, I don't know, about 10 o'clock, we'll get our pike tip up set up and then we'll start taking our camp down. It's supposed to be nice out today. We'll take our camp down as we're pike fishing. So let's do it. Oh, so he ate it, he ate it, he ate it, he ate it. Wow, I just got down there too. Nice, okay. He ate it. So it can be a perch or a walleye. Big, big perch, big perch, big perch. Guess I will catch fish right away. 12 incher to start it off. Still looking for that 13, but there's a fun start. Easy, easy. Okay, see ya. I hadn't even got my second line down there yet. Well, first fish. 7.56, I wasn't, I lied, it wasn't an hour and a half before sunrise, it's about 45, 50 minutes is what I think it is. I think sunrise is like 8.45ish, something like that. So as soon as I dropped down by minner, the perch come by and nailed it right away. It's probably in this area. Saw the middle drop, came over, couldn't resist a meal. My plan is to have some breakfast at some point here, but we're gonna fish for a little bit. And uh, yeah, we'll see. If I don't have anything come by in 10 minutes, I might start some, some brekkie or at least a hot beverage, I think. You know what, let's get a hot beverage going. Hot beverage obtained. I forgot to mention that the end of my last video where it was like to be continued, I had nothing go on last night. A couple perch after I started to fish in here, I pulled like, I pulled the pike tip ups out and fished two lines in here for the last hour of the day, hoping for a walleye bite. I had like no walleye come by at all. I don't think I caught one. I caught a couple perch, one like 12 inch or a couple other smaller ones. And that was it. The idea was to start yesterday's video or sorry, this video yesterday, like as in the, like the end of my day too, but nothing happened at all for the fishing sense throughout the night or anything. So I just kind of took more of a, a, a me night. I watched a movie. I cooked up a, a supper, just a, a ready, ready made meal one just because I still want to do uh, a chowder and I didn't want to cook that off a of camera and I didn't have a fish either. So that didn't really help. But I just took a, I took a me night since there was no fish anyway, there was really nothing else to report. This video will wrap up the rest of our gear that we have with us. There's a few huge essentials yet in terms of battery power. It gets you, gets me going through the whole thing. Table, a few other little items that we'll, we'll cover. But anyways, hot beverage obtained. Whoa. Like really hot. That needs to cool. Well, I figure I better have some breakfast too. I have an instant Quaker oatmeal, apple cinnamon. One of, uh, one of my favorites. It's got directions for a kettle and directions for a microwave. I don't got a kettle. I just put up water. I'm just kidding. Okay, 20 after eight. In one hour, 
if there's no uh, no action for walleyes, we will get our pike tip-ups going and focus on that. So I've got one hour before I gotta get dressed. Nice. <laughs> I just holding it still. I wasn't even moving it and you come over and eat it, ate it, eat it, ate it. That's a nice perch right there. Uh, 12 and a half. 12 and a half inch right there, baby. And I got one coming to the live minnow here right now as well. Here comes a fish. Here he comes. Come on. Come on. Nice. That one hit pretty hard. That one hit more like a walleye. If it's a perch, it's a nice one. Definitely hit more like a, a walleye. Ooh, no, nope. nice perch. Crazy. Okay. Well, geez, I think I caught that one yesterday. <laughs> the perch are liking the dinner bell just sitting there, not moving at all. I wonder if I try putting on a smaller... Live minnow, always coming right to it. You finally got it. Finally, wow, I was just gonna maybe put on a smaller live minnow. I think this is a pretty nice perch. Pretty sure it's a nice perch. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. That's one of the ones I'm looking for right there. Oh my goodness, I got my other line, but that's okay. Oh, I just, I think I just caught one of the ones I'm looking for. I just caught a real big one right here. That's one of the ones I'm looking for. Look at that big humpback. Oh, ho, oh, oh, ho, oh. ho. Is it gonna go 13? <laughs> it's not. 12 and three quarter. 12 and three quarter inch. Great big jumbo though. Oh, that's a fat one. See ya, buddy. There's obviously some other ones down there that are very close to that caliber fish. Well, quarter of an inch off of like the goal for length but that was a big big perch that was awesome okay we're gonna try a smaller minnow nice nice i got one on the on my other rod just as i was dropping back down another nice one that was big not as big but nice okay we're hammering perch i want to get dressed soon and get outside and get a pike tip up going but we're definitely enjoying this okay five minnows back down there I think it just got crushed. It did it did too? Nice. All of a sudden, they're eating. Like it's crazy how they can circle, 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 and all of a sudden they just eat. You'll notice in my camping videos, I don't give off as much, or I don't give as many like fishing tips and that type of stuff. If you're if you're really into fishing as well, and you're just watching my videos for the first time because of the winter camping, if you want to learn more about like fishing in terms of like rods I'm using, equipment techniques, all that stuff. I give more information away on my videos that I'm not actually winter camping on or I'm going out for a day type of thing. These videos I focus mostly on like the, the my camping gear, the experience and that type of thing. I kind of split it up a little bit and boom. Nope. Oh yeah, he's on it. Nice, nice to the sky. They're liking a little bit smaller minnow I went to for the perch. Oh, this one's a walleye. Okay, well, you're uh, you're a walleye that thought he was a perch. Well, here's a walleye that thought he was a perch. Never caught one of these all day yesterday. Nice. It's fire right now. Lights out. Another like 11 and a half, maybe 12. This one's not as fat as that other one I caught earlier. It's been good. Maybe a little bit disappointing that I haven't like had some great walleye fishing on this trip, but I was really coming to try to like catch a pile of big perch. That was like my, one of my biggest goals for sure. That's where I, I set up for that, that exact reason. Okay, it's 9.43. I still got some fish down there. I'm gonna try to get changed here though, so I can go reopen some holes and get a pike tip up soon. The action's really good, but I definitely do want to get a pike tip up out there soon. And if I don't just take a break from this, well, that's never going to happen. But there's like fish on here steady. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh boy. I'm in my socks because, like I said, I want to get changed. And look over. There's a fish. Oh, and it's a 
It's a big perch. It's a big perch. And there's another perch going to my live minnow at the same time. Oh no, oh no. Okay, oh no, oh no, oh no. Okay, reel this one in, reel this one in. <laughs> Just chaos, oh boy. Two jumbos, that one's bigger, that one's bigger. Wow, double fisting jumbo perch. This one's longer, so we'll throw this one back there. Get this one measured. <laughs> Did I do it? Oh, come on. Do you touch 13? It just touches 13 inches. We got our 13 incher. Unbelievable. On a double header. This one was on the live minnow. The other one was like a 12 incher. Awesome. Got our 13. Like I said, I was just, <laughs> I need to get changed. I had my shoes off already. I was about to put different pants on and boom. So good. Okay. I think I am changed. <laughs> Somehow I got dressed while this was going on. Crazy. Okay, now that I'm changed, let's pull the rods out of here. Let's get a hole drilled for pike. We can still come back and fish for perch for a little bit, but let's get a tip up down because it's 10 o'clock and I should have a tip up down right now. Okay, I've got my hole drilled out there and the camera's set up, just waiting for a little bit more visibility when the sun's about to break here from the clouds and I will drop a pike tip up. Until then, we will continue fishing in here just a little bit longer yet. Oh, oh, nice, nice, feels good. It's a walleye, it's a walleye. Another Walter. So maybe today's gonna to be a little bit better than yesterday in terms of walleyes. This one is gonna go into the fish chowder, I think. Ah, uh, he's a little small. Nah, we'll let him go. A little small. If I don't do fish chowder today, I'll just do fish chowder in a future video. That's all. Oh, it's going to the live minner. He's on it, he's on it. Nice, nice. What we got here? What do we got here? Big perch, big perch, big perch. Whoa, and gone perch. I, I, it wasn't 13, but does it matter? <laughs> I love it. Perch up, perch down. Something I do in my shelter here when I'm camping, I hang a couple fish towels right here. I even got one on each side. I don't know if you see that one, probably, but I can literally wipe my left hand, put my rod in my other hand, and wipe my right hand. Two towels just hanging there. It's nice to have a towel accessible when you want to wipe your hands when you're dealing with so many fish. Come on. Took a swipe, but didn't connect. Come on. Nice. Ooh. Ooh, this is a perch. It's big. Be a perch. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. That's a big one. I have just smashed jumbo perch today. Awesome. Okay, I want to measure you. I'm curious. I should put my measuring board right here, I think, for these perch. I can always move it if I have to fight. Wow, I thought it was bigger than that. 12 and a half. I thought it was going to go bigger than 12 and a half. I thought it was, might be another 13. It's a big one. Awesome. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. <laughs> so what happens when you get up to do stuff. Look over. There's a mark on the graph and your rod's almost falling in the hole. Just a perch massacre. Bump on the minnow. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> wow. This just doesn't get old. We just got our second 13 incher of the day. Awesome. Look at these things. <laughs> Wicked. Wicked. Well, we're officially transitioning to some pike fishing. It's noon, so we got about five hours of fishing total. I think I'm going to fish till about four o'clock. 
Got two flags out now. I'm done fishing in the shelter. We're finished with that. We're gonna pack everything up. But the sun's starting to kind of break through this fog, so I'll have better underwater visibility now. And uh, yeah, and a little bit warmer to spend time outside. So I'm gonna pack everything up and anything that I haven't talked about, I'm going to cover while I'm packing stuff up. I know there's lots of stuff I didn't cover yet that I use for winter camping that I still wanna cover now. So hopefully uh, some flags fly and we can put some big pike on the ice now. Let's do it. Oh yeah, come on, slip out, slip out, slip out. Oh, he's in the camera, I'm gonna pull the camera up. Oh, ho, ho. look at this. I saved myself a little bit. He was in the camera. I noticed the camera moving. Okay, let's get him, let's get him. Oh yeah, oof, feels good. They're always gonna feel good when you hit them if they're going away though too. Oh, love it. First flag of the day. Sun's kind of peeking out from those clouds a little bit. What do we got? What do we got? Feels heavy. We've got a live wall ready. We're gonna go right there with them. Actually, we'll get the hook out and then we'll take them to the live well, unless it's smaller, and then we'll just put them back. I'm gonna let, let's take this foam mat out possibly yet too here, just to make it a little bit easier for landing them. Not that you have to take it out. It just, that way his lip won't get caught as it's coming up. Just wait, just lots of weight. No runs yet. Check my drag just in case he does run. When he gets close to the hole, he'll probably run. So I want to loosen it up a little bit. Okay. It's going to be close. Oh yeah, there's their run right there. If they're not running when you first start, you know that once they get close to the hole, they're likely going to try to make a run. So make sure your drag is good and not too tight. This is a drama queen from face or from <laughs> I almost said Facebook from Frostbite. Oh, that's a nice one. That's a nice one. Drama queen rod from Frostbite. That's a nice one. Oh, I'm surprised he got himself backwards or back down after he was that close. That's a big fish. That's a good one. Nice. We'll get the hook out, get in the live well, and then uh, show it off. Okay, girl. Let's see, you're gonna be a little bit shy of a 40, I think. Oh, you're nice and healthy though, that's for sure. Nice and healthy. Easy. You could turn yourself around. <laughs> She's got lots of energy. Lots of energy. She's probably only like 38, 39, but she's nice. Oh, she might crack 40. Beautiful fish, beautiful fish. Oh, 39. And a half. Okay, one more quick show off. 39 and a half. That's been the story right now for me for pike. But nice ones. I don't mean like this video, I mean just for like the trip overall. Okay, girl. Thank you so much. 
she got lots of energy so there's no uh doubt she was going to kick off quick well that's a good start to the pike fishing this afternoon okay save and record oh there's a fish coming already am i going to be right here for this just getting set up again yeah okay i'm just getting set up again <laughs> can't see the bait I think he's I think he's got it already. I'm gonna hit him. Yep. Okay. I don't have any tools with me because I'm just getting my bait set up again. So if he's not beak hooked, I'm gonna have to run back to the shack with him in the rod and uh, unhook him. I just got everything set up again. It's crazy. <laughs> I don't think he's that big, but that was <laughs> that's awesome. Just got back down there and boom, fish instantly. There he is. I hit him right away, so hopefully he's not, uh, oh, I can't stick my hand in there. Normally I would let this guy go right at the hole, but uh, since I have to come back here and grab my pliers, we'll show him off quick. It's about a 35 incher, 34, nice fish. Okay, see ya. Okay, so do I have to take my pliers with me when I go set a bait up? Because that uh, was really fast. That's two fish, bang, bang. It's a good item to have if you're gonna do an overnighter is a beacon on your tent so you don't get crushed by a snowmobile in the middle of the night, but that beacon's right from Otter. It might come with the new tents, I can't remember for sure, but there's a place to put them on on the side of the tent and then at night that beacon just flashes. Yeah, good thing to have. So in the past, my winter camping trips, I've always ran a Honda generator. And I just wanted to get away from hauling around that generator, extra fuel, all that stuff, right? Like the noise with the whole filming side of it. And yes, a generator is still gonna have its place, but now I've switched over to, it's called the Dakota Lithium Powerbox 135. Now I have, I have two of these. I have a 135 and I have a 60 and I'll explain why. But these are the differences between the, or these are, okay. This is the power box. The only difference is the battery size. Everything else I'm gonna show you is all the same. And when you open it up, it has an inverter on it here, which you can power on. I think I already had it on. Now it's probably off either way. It's got four USB ports. It's got ports on the side to plug in uh, 110. So you're good to go. Under here, all this is just the battery right there. And that's a 135. And then in the front here, it also has an extra, here, let's close this up flip it over oh i forgot it also has like a little pouch here which i keep a lot of my uh cords in at all the time in here as well i should really look where i'm pointing the camera but this pouch is nice you can remove this pouch though if you want to put something else in there like a light or something like that too okay flip it over here and on this side here it has two ports here or two uh with the posts for positive and negative i have cords hooked up to here that I can unclip and clip my Mega Live to. So I ran my Mega Live off of this thing for three days. Well, for two and a half, I think, anyway. I tried to figure out the runtime hour I had, and I think it was like 30, 32 runtime hours or something like that, and it still has juice left, so I don't know how much longer it would go for. But this thing ran two GoPros the whole time for me, plus my Mega Live which was really nice to have all of that going right the whole time and not have to worry about bringing batteries in and out super handy for what i do overall i think it's a lot easier to haul around and use than a generator is a little bit more compact weighs a little bit less and yeah obviously a generator is still going to have its time and its place like if i was camping out here for five or six days i'd probably need a generator to charge these things back to life even right Charging batteries with batteries is never a really good option, but these are really good for like bringing my GoPro batteries back to life, my camera batteries. Not so much like bringing your uh, another, like say a flasher back to life. At the same time, you can though, right? If you have a 10 amp hour flasher, you can charge it overnight and you can use some of this to bring it back to life. It's not that big of a deal. Or you can do what I did. You can get external battery posts, like these things, hook it up and you have options to hook your flasher up that way too. So Powerbox 135 from Dakota Lithium and a Powerbox 60. You'll see Dakota Lithiums in a lot of my shots all the time. I run them for my underwater cameras, my screen recording, my lights in my tent. I've been powered by Dakota Lithium now for a couple of years. They take good care of me in terms of sending me some batteries to use and 
I definitely appreciate it very, very much. So yeah, a good power source. And I recommend this right here. These Plano tubs right here, I don't know the size on them, but these have been a really handy tub for winter camping. They slide under your cot, like really, really nice. And that's part of your, part of the thing you're always dealing with, right? Is like space, where do you put everything? Having some tubs organized nicely, whether you want to leave them outside stacked up with your food, anything like that. But I carry my extra batteries, food, supplies, cooking supplies, anything like that, right? Space, staying organized is a key. Like I mentioned probably in video two or one, and these little plain old tubs are nice because they slide under uh, your cot and other places like the table, which we'll cover yet too. Well, I was saving this bacon for the chowder, but that's not happening. So we're gonna cook it up and uh, have uh, bacon for lunch. These little coat hooks right here, so handy. They slide in the top of your shelter there where your hub pole is and you can hang stuff on it. Highly recommend it. I, I think I got these from Clam, I think. Very, very good for winter camping. Well, our packing up's going okay. A little bit to do, but now I'm just gonna sit down and enjoy the view for a little bit. If it gets better than this, I don't wanna know about it. Look at my tent, looks a little bit different now. I just got the essentials in here. A uh, tub left there that I gotta put in a sleigh. Everything's, look at, loaded. That back sleigh is all loaded. Camera gear. One of the other items I still want to mention, a table is really good to have. That's a, a little folding table. I wanna say it's like a, oh geez. I don't even know, two by four, maybe something like that. Maybe a two foot by four foot, could be. I think so, that sounds about right. Little folding table, the legs collapse. I use that too, like even when I'm not winter camping, I use it just to put everything on, but super essential for sure. Cooler there for live bait, because I am allowed live bait to lake I'm at. I don't really ever fish live bait for pike very often. I know I get asked that quite a bit. And I find that the dead bait just hanging there seems to do quite well for pike and live bait isn't a necessity. But yeah, fingers crossed we can uh, still get a monster. Let's do it. Well, we gave her a fight to the finish. Flags are pulled. I'm just loading up my final few items here. And that's it. That's uh, a load of gear. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. For two nights camping, three, three days, two nights camping, a lot of gear but it is what it is especially when you're filming obviously if i wasn't filming i would definitely minimize everything so hope you enjoyed this three-part series i'll do this again in the future for sure walleye was uh, a fail but the perch and the pike were a pretty good success story so thank you guys for watching and don't forget get outside